let's talk about the company army so a new administration was set up so the company required a new form of army so that battles could be fought so that it could protect its interest so the mughal army was mainly composed of cavalry the ghud sawars who were trained soldiers on horseback and the infantry the pedal soldiers who used to walk on feet they were trained in archery archery and the use of sword the cavalry they had to play a major role in the army and the mughal state did not feel the need to have a large professionally trained army so the rural areas in the rural areas a large number of people who were armed peasants the local zamindars they supplied the mughals with pedal soldiers at that time so here is an image of a ghud sawar we have spoken about the early army in the mughal empire but what about the army of the east india company so the east india company they adopted its own method when it began recruiting for the army it was known as the sepoy system from the indian word sipahi meaning soldier so there was a change in the warfare technology different kinds of weapons were used different kinds of things were used and techniques and strategies developed in the 1820s the, ca the cavalry needs of the company they declined because the british empire was fighting against in burma afghanistan and egypt so there was not just one war there were several wars in different countries there the soldiers were armed with muskets and matchlocks so this is a kind of weapon which was used at that time which are known as musket and matchlocks so next the soldiers they had to keep pace with changing military requirements there was a need for upgradation its infantry regiments now became more important so the infantry regiments these all things they became more important in the early 19th century the britishers they began to develop a uniform military culture that means that they used to train every sepoy every soldier uniformly using one technique and strategical method soldiers they were given european style training drill and discipline so it was not flexible like it used to be now it became more disciplined they regulated their life far more than before what they would eat when they will sleep where will they live etc often they created problems because a sense a feeling of caste and community was ignored in building a force of professional soldiers what happened was the new steam technology was helpful for the company the east india company they transformed from trading company to a territorial colonial power this was also aided by new steam technology which used in engines of ships trains etc this reduced the timing the transportation timing as well it was efficient earlier time taken for this journey was 6 to 8 months which was reduced to 3 weeks so the time was saved this enabled more and more britishers and their families to come from far off lands and establish and settle in india now east india company had virtually controlled the whole of the country by 1857 in 1857 the east india company came to exercise direct rule for about 63% of the territory and 78% of the population of the indian subcontinent combined with its indirect influences there were also some indirect forces on the remaining territory in terms of economic finances trade etc so virtually the whole of india was under the control of the britishers now now let's talk about what was happening in the other parts of the world here is a story from south africa there was slave trade going in south africa the dutch trading company they reached in the southern part of africa and they conquered the parts of south africa so what did they do here so they took and conquered the people and made them slaves in their courts they were asked to serve the british and english masters they did not have any rights the living conditions for these slaves it was very cruel so and they were also shipped off and migrated or sold in markets to america and europe so having learned that there was to be safe sale of cattle farm stock etc auction we halted our wagon 
for the purpose of procuring fresh oxen when slavery ended in 1837 there were about 36774 privately owned slaves at the cape located in the southernmost tip of africa so imagine the ruckus the havoc they created so what have we learnt in this chapter so far we learnt about how the east india company it came to india and it established its root in india and this led to a series of battles in the indian subcontinent apart from that we learnt who was tipu sultan and how did he came to be known as the tiger of mysore we saw what were the challenges and how the east india company it captured most of the territorial regions in the indian subcontinent moreover we learnt that there was a new administrative which was implemented and a new system new training policy for army was established so apart from that we saw what was happening with the slaves in south africa so i hope you understood everything thank you